it's a very complex mixture of largely plant compounds. The, mar the ones that we have in our diet now are mostly of the roughage kind. But in fact, the breakdown products of the fermentable fibres, we call them, are even more important. So while we're eating a lot of roughage type fibres, we should keep doing so. It's this hidden fermentable fibre that's, that's the key to our research. In fact, the, the fibre that we're talking about, the fermentable fibres, these are the fibres that bacteria use, are largely missing from our diet, particularly a form called resistant starch. And it's called resistant starch because while we can digest starch, and we can digest it theoretically to completion, that's in the small intestine, a significant fraction can, and in low-risk population does, escape into the large bowel where the bacteria use it. Let's go back a couple of hundred years, where we used to get this resistant starch, because remember, in that, at that time, uh, cereal and plant-based foods were the main components of the diet, so you'd get it from whole grain breads and cereals, breads and cereals made from the whole grain, not just white bread. You'd get it from, also from stale food, because during the cooking of food, you what's called gelatinize the starch, you make it digestible. But if you let it stand, particularly at relatively low temperatures, the starch, it's what's called reassociates, because starch is made up of chains of glucose. And what they do is they kind of self-associate, and that turns it into this resistant starch, which resists digestion, goes into the large bowel. Foods that are naturally cooked and are eaten as they are, are foods like three bean mix, legumes, Beans have quite high levels of resistant starch for the structural reasons in the beans, and some also contain compounds that inhibit the breakdown of starch. Only a few vegetables have starch in them, and, well, what you count as vegetables, there's um, potatoes, sweet potatoes, one, one group. Uh, there are beans, of course, uh, pulses, legumes. Um, generally, the, the sources of starch in the food supply are relatively limited. Chickpeas are a good example of a, of a starchy food, which also um, uh, seems to be a good source of resistant starch, as eaten traditionally. But there are always exceptions. I mean, soybeans are a legume. Think they're behind resistant starch or high in starch? Virtually none. So we have developed or are developing a high amylose wheat, which is higher in resistant starch. And our initial trials show that, yes, it is high in resistant starch, and that has all the right effects which are to promote bacterial fermentation and to raise the products of the bacteria which we believe are the means whereby they improve health.